I haven't recorded anything for quite some time, but um, this weekend my friend Alexi got me interested in self-organizing maps as a way to represent multi-dimensional data in 2D uh, and derive some information from that. It's based on a paper by Tuvo Conan, written in 1988. This is worth a read. Uh, Wikipedia's also got a good article on it uh, detailing uh, a look at the voting patterns of members of Congress in the states. That's multidimensional, many different votes. But then viewing this in a 2D uh, view with a self-organizing map, which allows you to cluster Republican Democrat or effectively the voting behavior on uh, any of the, uh, the the votes they've taken. It's a really useful way to look at it. So um, what's happening here? In this case, I used a data set which is pretty small, got it offline. It's countries with their economic data, so GDP, growth, education, and trade balance. And I normalized that zero to one. So this is the, the, the data. There's four dimensions of data. Then I constructed 100 neurons uh, in a grid, 10 by 10. And each one of these neurons has got a four-dimensional positional vector, exactly like the input data. And on each step, we look at these neurons and we determine which one of them is closest with a Euclidean distance, uh, which, of its, which of these neurons is closest to the input data we're looking at, the best matching unit. So that's what's going on there. But the really clever bit is when we update the positional vector of the neuron, we don't just update the best matching unit, we update, um, uh, uh, we update around it, we update the neighborhood, and the neighborhood is importantly in the 2D space. Um, so what that does is it causes these neurons to align uh, such that their uh, positional vectors are continuous in the 4D input space. So when you look at these neurons and you look at which of the particular um, bits of data uh, is clustered in, say, square 8 by uh, uh, x8, y, sorry, x10, y8, which is whatever it is that one. Uh, when you see which countries cluster in that, in, in that cell, then they will be similar in terms of the input data to all the others. So you get this really interesting pattern, Greece, Spain, Brazil, Mexico, Uruguay, up the other end, Malta, Cyprus, Malaysia, South Korea, Thailand, Portugal. We've got Zaire, Sierra Leone, El Salvador. And down here, we've got the Australia, US, Sweden, Canada. Um, so there's real information in this continuous 2D view of the input data which is based on 4D. So, well, how does it work? Um, a, bi a bit more on it, and, and a slightly perverse view, which I think is quite useful, is to let's just look at two dimensions of the data. So I've got 306 bits of data, I've got two dimensions, and those dimensions are randomly scattered in the, the space zero to one. So the blue dots you see here are, is the input data. Now, if I then just work with two dimensions and I plot the two dimensions of the nodes that I've created, um, and I run this for a very long period of time with random data, ultimately, the, the mesh, the grid, the neurons position themselves to cover more or less the full data set. You see some interesting surface tension effects here where the edge of the, the, the network is, is a slightly closer space than the, the inside. I guess because it's got more tension pulling back on it with this, this neighborhood thing um, uh, at the edges. Uh, and uh, you, you get uh, uh, the same sort of clustering. And if you clear this, you start off. So I've got now random weights at the start, and my self-organizing map is completely disorganized. The positions of these um, red dots are, are random because I've set them randomly. But as you stepwise improve the positional vectors of the neurons according to their distance to whichever piece of input data you've got and then drag the surrounding neighborhood of neurons you start to get this self-organization happening where the grid is in this case going to give a, a really good representation of the 2d data such that when you look at what which of the data gets clustered with a particular neuron um, you, you can then read up what these bits of data are. Of course, it's, it's kind of random and meaningless now. Um, uh, but, that, but effectively, you've got this um, function that clusters or aggregates 
similar bits of data when they are similar in the four dimensional space but it represents it in 2D so you get uh, a human viewable view of the multi-dimensional data in this case as I say it's only two dimensions of data I'll let this click through we're at um, uh, I think we're doing five epochs here and I'll show you some of the formula in case you have the desire to build this or understand it a bit better it's really simple if I get any interest on this video then I will will happily uh, um, uh, share the spreadsheet so this is um, the distance the Euclidean distance between the input data here so that's one of the pieces of input data uh, it's input data number two so it should be this one so that piece of data I've got the four dimensions going down here I calculate the Euclidean distance and then I calculate which is the closest of these neurons to the piece of data I'm looking at and then the clever bit of self-organizing maps is I expand this to the neighborhood of uh, points around the best matching unit uh, and this shrinks over time as I've said to help the organization of the net the net um, key bit is that we update these weight parameters uh, with um, based on a learning rate and what I'm doing is I'm saying well what learning rate should we use we've got 12 percent here so move 12 percent of the distance from uh, the the location of this particular neuron move this neuron 12 percent of the way to this particular bit of data and then a decreasing amount for these bits around it so that's the update this is the clustering algorithm and um, that's the neighborhood algorithm I think there are four or five formulas in this that allow you to do the the whole the, the kind of the whole bit of clustering. I think it's really interesting. Um, I could build one of these very quickly and can do that online if people uh, show an interest. But uh, what do you think?